Hello guys, this is Zuram and this is the last video on JavaScript picture puzzle game where we created a, this game using vanilla JavaScript ES6 classes. This is the last video as I said and uh, I want to show you a couple of changes which I made uh, since the previous video. The project is available on my GitHub account so you can check it out and play with it or do whatever you want. It's open source, it's there, so I will um, put the link in the video description. So um, there are a couple of things I made uh, in the project. First of all, as you can see, I have uh, two uh, canvas, two playing areas. The first one is three by three and the second one is four by four. So uh, as far as we created the project in an object-oriented way and we have possibility to have multiple instances of the game with different parameters, that's really, really easy. And I have also a second image, a nice Tesla car image uh, on the four by four playing area. Uh, we, we have also added the um, animation, sliding animation. And there's another thing which I want to show you. This is the counter. So in the console, I print every movement and it increases every time uh, I made a move. And when you have the final assembled version, you can show to the user how many movements the user needed. So let's have a brief overview of the code. And I'm not going to explain everything, the last changes step by step. As far as uh, I don't think that's really necessary, you can explore the code, it's on GitHub. But the basic idea, I think, is really clear for you from the previous videos. So let me show you what I did. The first thing what I did is that I added this model. So I added this model HTML in my index.html file. I have also included font awesome icons because the my model uses five times icon, and that's pretty much it. And instead of showing my, um, my model in the swap cells where this um, is assembled method was called, I created uh, an event. So uh, if this unfinished method exists on the picture puzzle class and its function, I'm just calling this function. And in my app.js on the picture puzzle instance, I'm listening this unfinished event listener and actually showing the dialogue, showing the model. So as, as I said, I'm not going to explain everything here because that's beyond this video, but that's the basic idea. And I, of course, I have this some um, model CSS. Um, let's see how the model looks like. Here is our model which is really nice and it blurs the gaming area on which it was displayed. Okay. And we have in the console how many movements it was necessary to assemble this uh, image and it's 56. Okay. The second thing what I did is that in my uh, picture puzzle, I had this dimension which was hard coded to three. I moved this uh, into a constructor argument and now, for the first in instance, I'm just leaving the default value, which is three. And for the second one, I'm using a different image. And I have also given this four, which is which means that I want to play four by four. Also, I have added this on swap event listener on this uh, picture puzzle game, and I just print the number of movements. And let's go to the on swap. Let's search on swap. The on swap basically is used in cell.js. Yeah, when we call this swap cells method, I just check the if the on swap exists on the puzzle and it, if it's a function, then I'm just calling this on swap and passing the number of movements, which is also a public uh, new variable added in the picture puzzle.js. And the most important, and I think the uh, most tricky, was adding the animation using vanilla JavaScript. So when I click on this, um, it sl smoothly slides to its empty area. So the first thing what I did uh, is that in my cell.js, uh, when I call this swap cells method, I added the third parameter in the swap cells, animate true and false. 
So if I follow these swap cells, here is this animate property. And I am passing this animate property to the, um, to the cell on which I click. And in set, in set position, I accept this property and I calculate whether I want to animate to the left, to the right, to the top or to the bottom. And I have created this animate left and animate top properties, uh, methods, excuse me. And I have this uh, animation duration, uh, which is 500 milliseconds. So if I change this up to uh, 1000 milliseconds, this means that animation to the left or to the right, basically this covers both animations to the left or to the right. So this will need one second. And we can see that the animation is much slower when it slides to the left, but it's a little bit faster when it slides uh, up or bottom. Okay, so let me increase this to have a noticeable difference. Okay, here is our animation to the right and here is uh, from the bottom, uh, from the top to bottom. So one improvement which can be done here is that the animate left and animate top methods look really similar to each other. So right now I'm going to merge them into single method and just give the um, give this top or left position as an argument. Okay, so here I have the current left and the destination left and I calculate this and I make a movement. So here I'm going to change my animate left into just animate and just pass the uh, argument whether it's left or top. So let's call it position. The position is left or top and I'm going to take this position and put it right here. So whatever is given left or top, I'm going to set it in the style property. And I'm going to rename my left variable, which is the current position and I have destination. So when I call the animate left, I'm going to replace it with animate and pass it the left as the first argument. And for animate top, I'm going to also change this and pass top as the first argument. Now, as we can see, our animation works fine. Just it's a little, it's a little bit slow because we increased our animation duration in animate method. It's set to 2000 milliseconds. I'm going to revert it back to the 500 milliseconds and that's much better. I have additional parameter uh, frame rate, uh, which means how often I should update the uh, sliding animation. And right now I think the animation is really smooth. So if I change this to 100 milliseconds, anima animation will not be that smoother. You see how it moves? So uh, this is better to be as low as possible. So 10, um, 10 milliseconds is really good. And I'm going to remove my animate top property completely. Uh, excuse me, method. That's basically all on this game. So we have really configurable game. So we can play with any image we want. We can uh, play on any dimension we want. And we can also um, make some additional additional parameters. So we can uh, we can, for example, for your inspiration, you can put an input type uh, file here and choose your desired image and play on this. And you can show the timer also here. So you you may maybe you want to put a play button right here and when you click the play button timer starts and then when you assemble the image you see dialog how many movements it, uh, it was necessary for you to assemble the image and how much time did you uh, you need needed actually to assemble the image okay that's basically all uh, please let me know what you think about um, this game actually and about um, about my code uh, you can find the code, as I mentioned already, I think three times on my GitHub. So, thanks for watching, um, and please hit the like and subscribe buttons. And if you like the video, share the video on your social network. 
Thanks again and see you in the next time.